I think it's just a, another great challenge, and that's kind of the, the beautiful thing about the National Football League is there's just so many great players, and, and a guy like this who's a top pick in the NFL draft, and a guy who's so mobile and, and can throw the ball, it's always a unique challenge for us, um, and, and just looking forward to getting after him, but uh, they have a great running attack to help him out a little bit, and uh, any time a quarterback is able to move around in the pocket and create escape lanes, it, it creates a certain type of challenge for the rushmen, uh, myself included. Yeah, I think he's. We're kind of finding a nice little role for him, especially in the rotation, and uh, in our package where all three of us are out there at the same time. He's he's wanting to do everything that any anything possible to get up on the field, and uh, just happy to work with him. And I think he's only going to get better as as the season progresses. Did you get to know him during the draft process? No, I think during the draft process, you're just so focused on answering questions the right way, talking to so many different people at the combine. It's so chaotic that you don't really have time to kind of meet and mingle with the guys like you'd want to. Um, but been watching from afar and glad to have him on our team for sure. I feel the turnovers are starting to come, especially in critical times in the last three games. Massive moments when you guys did force the turnover. It's something that we've continued to work on and we're going to continue to work on. We do a takeaway circuit here every Friday. Today is like a Friday, even though it's Saturday. Um, and we're just trying to find ways to create that splash that we always talk about that we've been able to get uh, for the past four or five years that I've been here. Um, and we know that they come in bunches, they come in waves, and you can't press too hard because then like we'll have problems like we had earlier in the season where myself in particular are out of gaps, trying to do too much. Um, we just have to play really assignment sound football and those things will come. The schedule, just you can count playing them twice with um, Baltimore and Cleveland. You play a lot of running teams. Your schedule year after year. There's run first. Not many run first teams left in the NFL, really, and you can get them a lot. Is that, uh, are you guys almost like, used to it? Are you going to take advantage of that? Uh, it's almost a. I don't know. Like I said, it's it's a challenge. Week in and week out, you know there's going to be something unique about a team that you didn't see the week before. Um, we've seen a lot of running offense, obviously, in Cleveland and um, with Baltimore as well. But like I said, this isn't a Baltimore-style run offense. It's a totally different style of run offense. Um, so um, they like to run the ball downhill, and they like to move the quarterback around too, out, out of the pocket, get him comfortable. Uh, so it'll be a challenge. Do you feel like there's not a lot of depth in your DBs? or somebody can't play and it would be all right back there? Uh, next man up mentality here, a standard is a standard, all that stuff. I, I truly believe that and I love the guys and that we have in the locker room and um, everybody out here practices like they're going to start that week. So that's what makes this group so special. Najee, uh, you, you've talked about meeting with the offensive linemen in, in their room and sort of getting a feel for, for how they do things. Is that something that you, you've always done high school, college? Where, where high school, no. No, not high school. I don't think you need to do it in high school. Um, college, um, let's see, well, college, we will meet with the, uh, run, uh, with the offensive line every now and then to talk about runs and, and, and fits. And uh, I mean, so I'll just start. I guess it kind of just uh, wear it on me now. I'm doing it in the NFL by myself. You feel like it's beneficial for you? Though? It's really beneficial for both of us to be on the same part, on the same page with a lot of things so we can understand, like, what's my read, what's my, what's my, um, like if they want to know sometimes, I remember I asked a couple guys like Dan, you know, what is a what is a way that you want to block me uh, that you want to that, that you want to help? Like, I'm sorry, it's been a long day, but uh, <laughs> they wanted to they wanted to tell me, um, you know, what is a good way to block this guy on the edge? So I was like, you know, if it's outside zone, I want you to block him this way, this way, and this way. So we can be on a better page and things um, with the tackles and guards, you know, a way to to uh, block the my read on uh, certain runs. So it could be a better fit for me and better fit for them. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I started maybe like, maybe like second, third game. That's when I, I really started doing it. Yeah. Are you the only running back that's in there? Or are all the guys coming? You know. Um, so we try to meet every Thursday with uh with, with everybody, um, and then um, you know I, I mean I stay here so late, then I, I go in it by myself a lot. But uh, this is because I have nothing else to do. You know, <laughs> I don't have a life outside of this. So uh, yeah, I stay extra. You know, Najee, Matt, Matt Canada was saying that there's something to the effect of you, you've learned to appreciate that sometimes a four-yard run in the NFL exactly. is really good. How long did it take you to 
Yeah, I understand a lot more. Um, ben would always tell me, like, you know, you can't break every run when I got here. So you can't break everyone in the NFL. So, um, you know, understanding how important it is just to even get like two yards or one yard in the NFL is really hard, um, especially with the type of guys that got across the ball. So, I mean, you know, me understanding that, you know, not every run's going to be a home run and, you know, a four yard run is, 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 is good because now second down is shorter and you can, uh, you know, run better plays. It makes it easier for the offensive coordinator. Um, and the rest of the team. So, you know, taking what they give you is kind of uh, really big in the NFL that I'm learning. There's a lot of joy in a, in, a, in a nice run or a nice reception. But for you, how about the satisfaction on the block the other day on the touchdown? Pass, on the touchdown one. Where, where Ben moves you over and you're. Oh, that's okay. You end up, you know, just the, the feeling of, of helping out the team and that's something that probably most fans wouldn't even recognize. You know, notice. notice the little things? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, so, yeah, on that play, let's talk about that. So, that play, um, uh, I'm guessing Ben already told you that he, he kind of. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so, so I was supposed to line up on the right, but Ben said go to the left. So, um, you know, I line up on the left, and then, you know, they got two good, they had a really good front. So, I always, so anytime I go in a game, um, I always want to know where 95. I'm sorry. What number was he? Yeah. 95. Yeah, 95 was at. Um, just because you know he's he's so he's so much of a, a good good player and he's a game wrecker. So you know when he put me on that side, you know I was supposed to go to the right and help out the tight end, but um, I saw him on the left. I, I I was thinking that's gonna be a more hard of a block for Dan. And you know he's a rookie and stuff like I'm a rookie too, but uh, he's a rookie. So you know I scanned to the right for my protections and I wanted to make sure that Dan was good on the on the left. So um, that's what ultimately ultimately made me come back other side and help him. I'm not supposed to do that. All right, so let's just put that out there. All right, so my my coach did kind of say, "Good job, but don't do that again." You know, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that you've had a chance to uh, look at your touchdown in Cleveland, the diving uh, touchdown is that one of the better ones you've ever had in your career? The diving one? Yeah. An NFL or just oh, anyway. Oh nah. I mean, now now that you get to see it. Shoot, sure, man, a touchdown, a touchdown. I don't really look at the how how I did it. As long as I get it. Did you start the season with numerical goals for yardage? And, and if you did or didn't, now that you're half, almost halfway through, do you have numbers that you try to shoot for in mind when you look at like rushing yards or something? Yeah, rushing yards. Our total yards or something? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, the start that we had, you know, it's just kind of just we're worried about just winning games now. You know, it, it, it's it's so hard to win some games in the NFL. That's just. You know, when you come in, when you come here, you wanna. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and say I, I didn't have a goal, but now, like, you understand how hard it is to come across wins. You know, that's just the main goal now, is just to keep winning games, stacking bricks, and getting better. I didn't even think of this. Maybe somebody asked you about this before the Cleveland game, but and I know your careers didn't overlap at A&M, but did you ever work out with with Miles Garrett during the offseason? Never at all. No never. Interaction? Never. Not at all. Um, the recruiting, my official visit at A&M, I took. Um, he was there, but yeah, um, he, he left shortly after that. So, maybe what you can pick up. Actually, how much can you pick up from from defensive linemen? Uh, you know, I guess you'd have to go back to training camp. But when you're going up against guys like, well, like TJ, or going up against Cam, Norman, guys like that, how much can you pick up from them, even beyond what you've learned from your own coaches? A lot, um, especially just. Um, over time, being around guys and understanding the, the play of defensive linemen, um, the ways that they try to cheat um, with their stances, whether they're leaning, um, defensive ends specifically, and the, the defense that we run, uh, having guys that drop, whether they're in, with their hand down on the ground or if they're standing up, um, just different key indicators you can you can have pre-snap. How did you feel about your game? Um, I mean, it, it was mixed. I mean, he, he definitely got the better me of some plays, and um, I thought I held my ground some plays. Um, thought I played physical in the run game, but overall, just trying to clean things up um, and fine tune things in pass pro was really, really what this week was about. I'm sorry, what did you learn the most from that? Maybe, like you said, it was a mixed bag, but what did you learn maybe from the things that you're thinking, man, I, I got to be better? I got to get off the ball. Um, cadence was a, was a factor in that game, being a away game. And, um, and he picked up the, our, our cadence pretty quick. So um, beating him off the ball was, was a huge challenge that game. You know, the run game, I know, and, and we, we talked to Matt Cannon about this too, the mix seemed like it was, it was, it was pretty good. Uh, did you feel good about the, the, the run pass mix and, and maybe what happened you guys got from the run game? 100%, definitely. Um, and I, I think as an offensive lineman, uh, I mean, 
us specifically, we we try to we try to pride ourselves on the run game. So that's that's kind of how we get our juice and our, and our flow in, in the game. Dan, yesterday, Dre said you guys haven't played the perfect game yet, but he feels like it could come down the road, November, December, January. How close do you feel you guys are? I think we're extremely close. Um, when you talk about the continuity that we're building as an offensive line, I think we're starting to find our identity. Um, and and we're, we're, we're getting very close. We're talking about identity. What do you want the identity of this line to be? Um, a physical offensive line um, that can pound you and, and run away with the game in the fourth quarter. You know, Najee talked about, uh, I mean, you guys are both learning the pro game. And from his standpoint, it's, it's got to be different than what he faced at, at Alabama. What? What is that ball? He, he comes in and watches film with you guys. How, how does that interaction go? Um, just just learning their what they're looking at, his keys, his aiming points, um, his steps, him, him wanting to know what we're doing, what our aiming points are, so he can know kind of where combinations are going and and pops possibly where the hole's going to be before it even opens. What kind of presence is Trey in you guys' room? You're on the field together and stuff like that. It means you're a older guy, you're a veteran guy. Definitely, definitely. We were all laughing because um, we were sitting on the bench earlier, and uh, he, he started talking, and everybody kind of gathered around him. And um, somebody made a joke just saying, like, anytime Trey's talking, everybody kind of gathers around. Um, he's kind of like our the old man of our room, always preaching wisdom, coaching up the young guys. So um, he has a huge presence in the office. Let's do two more. Is there tangible improvement? Like, we, the numbers are better. We all, with our, well, I don't want to speak for everybody else, but my untrained eye watching the other line seems to be a lot better the last few weeks in the first couple of weeks. Do you guys really see that? Is that what you see in the, in the film room too and everything? Do you guys Definitely. We're, I mean, we're getting better. Um, like I said earlier, the continuity of the, of the offensive line, um, we're building that um, and, and just getting better every day.